Even though rumors claim that iOS 9 would be a very conservative software update focused on ironing bugs, it's actually far from the truth. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now here with a quick look at iOS 9 Beta 1. At a quick glance, iOS 9 looks very similar to iOS 8 and 7, but this first beta brings a bunch of subtle differences that weren't even mentioned in the keynote, and that do make a lot of sense. For starters, iOS 9 is far more search-centric than it was in the past. Subtle changes like adding a search bar at the top of the settings menu, for example, and even applications like the photo gallery as well are differences. Apple Spotlight Search has also been enhanced with a slide from the left where your favorite contacts will now be placed, in addition to proactive suggestions from Siri, which aren't really working for everybody on this first beta. You can still slide from the top of the home screen, though, in case you became used to that as well. All this has been enhanced because Siri now plays a more predominant role. You can now ask it to give you photos of your last trip to Barcelona and it'll filter these out, though it doesn't always work on this first beta. Or you can even ask it for a video that you took of somebody at a birthday party and it'll also provide this information. It's also more location sensitive like Cortana, so you can ask it to remind you of something when you get to the car and it'll give you the information when you do. It also integrates with the new changes made to Apple Maps in order to remind you when you have to leave somewhere. Again, features that uh, look a lot like Cortana. We'll have a more extensive look at Apple Maps in a separate video once these uh, features get polished. Notification Center has also seen some minor changes. Widgets are still at the same useless place, but notifications are now filtered by date and time and not by application, which is more useful. Notes has also received a subtle change in making it less of a bare-bones sheet of digital paper with doodle options, checklists, etc. Apple's Passbook is now renamed to Apple Wallet, uh, with options to add uh, more card types, though the mileage may vary depending on where you live since Apple Pay is still blocked for certain countries. Apple has also boasted that iOS 9 improves battery life by one hour on regular use and up to three hours in its new power saver mode, though Obviously, this is pre-release software, and so far we're glad this is Beta 1 because our battery experience so far has been terrible. Really bad. Other enhancements were made to how responsive the OS is, and that's even available in Beta 1. You'll notice that animations have been dropped and made more subtle, and giving you the impression that the OS is actually faster. Other more hidden changes come in security to a certain degree, like for example adding six-digit PIN codes for unlocking your device, or even two-step authentication for iCloud in case you need it. iCloud Drive also gets a hidden application that you can activate from the iCloud settings as well, and Apple also goes as far as to giving you a migration tool from Android, since that's been very common lately. Now probably the coolest change that we get is multitasking, which changes to a certain degree in the iPhone, but goes major on the iPad. On the iPhone, it brings a very different user interface with larger cards and a slider from the left instead of the right. And you'll now notice that your favorite contacts are not placed at the top anymore since these already became part of the left slider. The animations for switching between apps have also changed in order to make it more subtle than it was previously. And if you make a quick switch between one application and another, iOS will now give you an indicator at the top left to switch back, allowing you to save a double tap in the home button. On the iPad, this changes dramatically better. Most iPads are getting a new slide over from the right feature, which will allow you to snap notes or other application options, which is really cool, but notice that this places the primary application to sleep. There is also a picture-in-picture -picture mode that allows you to continue watching a video while you're doing something else, which is extremely useful. Now, those of you owning an iPad Air 2 are getting the biggest treat, as multitasking does extend to allow you to have windows placed side-by-side -side in any orientation and allowing you to use both applications at the same time. The iPad keyboard was also enhanced with a new trackpad-like function, in addition to giving you more gesture options that truly make this feel like more of the modern computer that Apple intended it to be. And so far, that's the biggest takeaway with iOS 9. This is the most mature we've ever seen iOS become, and making iPads in particular feel more like computers to a certain degree. Now we've got more coverage from iOS 9 in comparison with Android M, in addition to other videos coming very soon, so make sure you follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, and you can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching.
We'll see you on the next one.